All right, replacing your motor on the WL Toys V913, which is also known as the Skydancer. Simply take off your battery, take off your your cockpit, your face. If you don't know how to do that by now, then you shouldn't be changing the motor. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna walk you through the other steps. Give me a second here. I had to point at the body right here. Now, why I'm doing this, I'm going to take advantage. I found this at Home Depot. It's actually a uh, super lube silicone heat sink compound. And it was like, like $8, $9 at Home Depot for a three ounce tube, which is kind of decent. Because um, on these V913s, they kind of have a little heat sink that's built into them. That connects you to a chassis so you can kind of dissipate the heat through the chassis um, but if the end if the motor is really not touching that that um that heat sink it's not really going to transfer the electricity over so by using this it helps you know spread it <laughs> right. there's a new motor and i recommend getting plenty of spares uh this one either takes a 380 or a 370 i think these are 380s and I forgot where I bought this, so it was either Banggood or some RC shop. Alright, first thing you want to do, and I, again, I take off the canopy and I take off the, um, the battery just to make it more comfortable for me to work around. There's people who can do it without it, but, you know, I'm lazy. Now, first thing I do is right on top here, on the board, this is where the motor connects, right back here. So, you kind of want to pop that right out. Very simple. Only goes in one way, so you're not going to have any headaches of it ever removes. Next thing you want to do is flip your copter over and remove the four screws for your landing skid. I'll try to do it as fast as possible so I don't bore you. And by the way, this is not the default landing skid of the V913. It's actually uh, the one from the Double Horse 9053. It was a little more sturdier and a little thicker, so I changed it after I bet mines. Plus, it looks a little nicer, and it gives me a little more, a little more reach in the front. So, if you hit the ground, or you hit the grass, or you hit something, this tends to protect a little better. And the cheap one that the, nine, the V913 comes with. Now, the motor is going to be nice and clear to pop down as soon as we take it off. And it's pretty straightforward. Right here at the top, see if I can remove this so you can see it. There's two screws that hold the motor down. Pretty straightforward. Screw number one, screw number two. It's right there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove them. And actually, trust the little magnet. magnet. One Simply pop it on the screwdriver and get those little pesky screws that end up falling. And it's usually a little bit of a hassle to get these screws out since the motor itself is magnetized. It tends to make the screws stick to it and it gets annoying when you try to remove them. The motor actually pops right out of the bottom. See right there? And actually just gently push it down. Carefully getting the cable out, and the motor comes right out. Just remember where the cable went through and where it plugs into. There's the old motor. Let me get a napkin because I had some heat sink on it. Motor is removed. Make sure the path is clear. Everything's cleaned up. That's how the inside looks like without the motor. Let me get the actual little screw that was hanging in there. Uh, 
gently dab a little bit of it on the top here and then since these are the some breathing areas so I don't want to put any here so I'm only going to add some here on the sides some up here some over here And just a little generous spreading here. Alright, heat sink silicone. Nice little invention. Okay. This is ready to go in. Alright. I'm gonna make sure I put it in this way which is how the cables went before just to make my life easier so it goes back in the same way I'm going to push the cable through where it was before and right over the side here and I'm going to simply bend this and carefully push it all the way through I might have to jiggle a little bit so I make sure it goes through all the way and connects to the flywheel that's on top. All right, once you get it all the way through, simply turn it over and just align the screws. Now if you don't see the actual holes line up, just gently turn the motor until you see both holes perfectly lined up. So it is there. Okay, and then there's a little breathing hole, just slightly, like a little, almost looks like a little happy face. It's there too. Okay, I'm gonna get my two little screws, get my Mr. Magnet, which I lost. All right, so we get both screws in there. And what I like to do is as I'm screwing it in on the top, make sure I'm nice and firm. I'm pushing with my finger this back a little bit because I want to make sure that this and this is nice and tight. I don't want it too far out because that's the one way you strip your, your gears up. So I hold it back a little bit with my finger and I tighten. Same thing with the opposite side. Hold back a little bit and I tighten. So tighten these two screws while you hold this back a little bit. Then the gear is nice and tight and nice and snug on there. And now that little motor is through, the cables are pushed up where they go. Goes all around and right back to where it goes inside. So there, if you notice this little plug has a flat side and the side with a couple of pins. The pin side will go out and it'll pop neatly right in. Don't force it in and sometimes what's good to do is put your finger or put something right back here to kind of brace it when you're pushing down because these boards are a little loose, a little bouncy on there. So put your finger in the back and just gently get the motor in place and just snap it down. It should be pretty flush. So the end result is the motor snapped in, cable goes around, right through the front here, right through the bottom, and into the motors. Make sure there's no obstacles, nothing in the way, and make sure after you put it in that no cables got pinched, nothing got pushed inside, you know. Don't be lazy. If you see there's something pinched or something in the way, Take it apart, put it back in, it's not going to kill you. you know. And then you should feel this nice and snug, there shouldn't be too much play in here. And simply 
Put the landing gear back on, reconnect, and test. Now I'm going to go ahead really quick here and put all the landing gear back on and I'm going to go over a break-in which is really important with these new motors. You shouldn't just put them in, pop them out and fly them outside because you can really tear up these motors inside and they won't last as long. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on fast, pop it right back in so you're not sitting there waiting and then I'll show you the break-in uh, part. Alright, I've got the landing gear back on, I reconnected my battery, and I got the skids in place, and I'm going to do the proper braking. So the motor's um, set up, and oh, and before you ask, this is V913 has got a couple of mods in it. I got the stopper mod on top, I got the, um, the Nanotech uh, 2000 milliamp battery, so the front's a little heavier. And I also replaced both the servos for digital servos in the back. Uh, so it might look slightly different. That's why these cables are different colors that you're probably used to when you see your own board uh, and your own setup. So it's just some minor modifications just to make it fly a little better. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is let me grab my, where's my little beeper? This is pretty good. It's a $6 investment. It's a battery monitor. It kind of has uh, green LEDs, one LED per whatever amount of cells you have. And it has a little beep on top that goes crazy when your battery is too low. This protects your light poles from going way too low and you don't over drain them and damage them and cause the puffiness that you normally see when light poles get really fat. Uh, I put these on all my quads. I put these on all my uh, helis. Uh, and it's pretty simple. They got a negative and a positive. You just kind of line up the black with the negative, pop it in place. You see, and it has one LED per cell. So in this case, it's a two cell, uh, 7.4 volts. And I just keep it, um, I just keep it tucked in uh, on, on my quads. I I varico it, but this will kind of let me know that if I'm over draining my battery, and I don't, you know, it, plus it helps if I'm flying out there. Kind of screams at me, hey, running out, running out. <laughs> All right, proper braking. Make sure you're on a nice clean surface, nothing around you. Say, we don't want to run this very, very low. I'm going to go ahead and move back a little bit so I don't drop any. All right, I'm going to go ahead and connect my battery. Oops, that shouldn't have been on. Okay, I'm going to connect my battery. I'm going to turn on real quick. I'm going to set my control so it recognizes it. Servos are kicking in, good connection. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Let me try to get this up here where you can see it. And I'll try to move this back a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on, but I'm going to try to do it at the lowest possible setting. So I'm going to go ahead and just slightly touch it. Now, I'm going to start tapping it down, so it literally turns off. When it turns off, I'm going to tap once, up. Okay, now, what you want to do, so this setting here is very, very low. What you want to do is keep it running at that speed for about five minutes. Then after five minutes, you can raise it just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just in case if you can't hear I'm going to repeat that step. Okay, so you got your new motor in, and this is the proper break in for these motors. You go ahead and you make sure everything is zeroed out on your control right here. You're going to go ahead and just slightly bring it up to the power kicks, and then you're going to tap down till it stops spinning, and then tap once up. Here we go. I'm going to go up a little bit. You see it cut off? Now I'm going to tap once up. And simply leave it there running for 20 minutes, for 5 minutes. Now, this will not overheat your motor so you don't have to worry 
is a very very low setting. It should it, it wouldn't it won't damage anything. And since the air is nice and cool, we're doing it indoors. It won't overheat. And plus, there's no. I, I do it with the with the cover off, so the cool air from the fan will keep everything cool. All right. I'm not gonna turn off. I'm not gonna bore you by you sitting here watching this for five minutes. But I'm gonna go ahead and break in my new motor. And once you do that, take your battery out. Go put it to charge. Make sure you put it on a timer. You don't want to do it more than five minutes. Five minutes will be pretty good. After the five minutes, take it outside, run it a little bit up, down. Don't overdo it, don't go crazy. Just up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, if you didn't kill the battery completely, if not, um, you know, swap up a new battery, give it about 15, 20 minute break, and boom, you're good to go. Motor will last you a very long time, and you won't have any problems. I hope you enjoyed this video and this helped you out. Later.